Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, we are talking about nuclear energy with our guest, Harvey Sluggo Wasserman. He is a past guest and a lifelong activist who speaks, writes, and organizes widely on energy, the environment, U.S. and global history, drug war, election protection, and grassroots politics. He's taught at Capital University, Columbus State Community College, and Hampshire College. He's authored or co-authored 20 books, countless articles and speeches, two films, and a Grammy-winning song. Hosts two radio shows, California Solartopia and the Green Power and Wellness Show. Harvey helped coin the phrase no nukes in 1973, and his latest article at Counterpunch is called Nuclear Power's Lethal Larcenous Endgame. Harvey Wasserman, welcome back to Talk World Radio. <laughs> well, it's an honor, David. You, you, you're such a great activist. I'd love to read your bio here, but thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. So uh, I think we know how you feel about nuclear energy, but why is it an end game? Is that a long standing wish or is that a factual observation? Well, David, we're actually in a, in a, in a major, major um, a geological fault line here, historically. The last light water, large nuclear power plant in the United States has opened at Volta, Georgia, and we're not happy about that. But for the first time since 1954, 70 years, there are no large light water atomic reactors on order or under construction in the United States. So it's a major, you know, since Dwight Eisenhower's um, Adams for Peace speech in the, December of 1953, um, um, light water reactors have been on the table in the United States as the peaceful atom, so-called, which is most definitely not. And um, it's been a part of our, our landscape uh, for 70 years. 70 years, and now there are none, none on order, none in, under construction. We have 94 operating, unfortunately, or at least licensed. But um, the, the, the big hype right now, the so-called nuclear renaissance, which has been you know back and forth for a dozen times, they're talking about small modular reactors, which we call small mythological reactors. And they've got this whole Michigas, they're going to, um, bring in these new um, models. There are like 50 different um, uh, plans out there, and it's not going to happen. Uh, they, they're just not going to get built. And the, the earliest they could get built would be five to 10 years. So we have this giant gap now where nuclear power, essentially new nuclear power is over. Now, uh, you know, worldwide, China and Russia are both building reactors. There's a few reactor projects in, in Europe that are complete catastrophes. Um, you know, billions and billions of euros over budget, years and years late. Uh, they're all, uh, you know, incredibly failed. The, the real poster child for so-called new reactors in the United States is VC Summer in, um, in South Carolina. With what Westinghouse set out to build two large reactors each, two in Florida, I'm sorry, two in South Carolina and two in Georgia. And the, the two in Georgia did come online uh, 15 years late and $20 billion over budget. The two in South Carolina, they spent, at BC Summer, they spent $9 billion, about the same as the Webb Telescope, for God's sakes. And they have, to show for it, two holes in the ground. These two reactors are never going to, I mean, they're just, they're just done. They, they never, they can never finish them. That's the end of nuclear power. So why is there this burst of people, people I respect, intelligent, educated people and otherwise, believing that nuclear power, if we could have it, would be green, would be the salvation of the climate. Why do so many people think this now who didn't think it a few years ago? And why aren't they right? Well, I think they took the bad acid at, at Woodstock, basically. I mean, it, it's just um, a, a myth. They're not doing their homework. The reality is that nobody can build a large new nuclear plant anymore. They, they, it's a complete failure. Well, but they, if they could, it save the climate. 
it's it, the nuclear power plants harm the climate. They are incredibly hot, obviously. Um, uh, the, the heat radiation pressure has uh, essentially decimated the internals of all the old reactors. We have 94 reactors licensed to operate in this country. They're actually trying to bring one back online that shut two years ago in Michigan. It's insane. It, people are not paying attention. The reality is that atomic power is the most expensive technological failure in human history. Um, you know, we had, uh, in, the, in the course of the past 70 years, we've had 250 reactors, or thereabouts, ordered in the United States. Half of them were built. Many of them were abandoned under construction, costing hundreds of millions of dollars. Of the half built, half of them has suffered at least a one-year um, a hiatus when they were offline, and the other half uh, can't compete with renewables. I mean, what's really happened, David, um, it sounds hippy-dippy, you know, because of solar and wind, it's all, it's identified with the counterculture, which is fine. But the bottom line is that one of the great, <clears throat> I'll even call it a miracle in the last 70 years, uh, is that renewable energy has just um, uh, skyrocketed in terms of uh, efficiency and cost effectiveness. Yeah, you know, solar is a fraction of the cost of nuclear power. Uh, uh, the, the real solution to the climate situation and to the energy problem, as well as to our employment, by the way, and, and many of our economic problems, is rooftop solar, uh, uh, photovoltaic cells and water heating done on rooftops. Uh, it's incredibly efficient. Uh, job producing, getting better. I mean, the, the curve of nuclear uh, went straight up in terms of cost and danger. The curve of solar has gone exactly the opposite direction. And ironically, uh, you know, the, as I said, the first reactor in the United States, commercial reactor, they started building in 1954. It's also the year that um, uh, uh, Bell, Bell Labs invented the first modern usable photovoltaic cell. I have actually held that cell in my hands. It goes around to like solar fairs. The second uh, photovoltaic cell uh, went up in space uh, on the Vanguard satellite. They were done, essentially done for the space, space program. But we've known about photovoltaic uh, uh, since the 1800s. Windmills uh, have also uh, plummeted in cost. There was a, a, um, a fair that I went to in Amherst, Massachusetts in 1975 with Amory Lovins and a guy named William Hieronymus. And this guy, William Hieronymus, had a, a diagram of a, a windmill that he wanted to put offshore. And it was five megawatts, which is big. And people laughed at him. They said, you, you're crazy. It's never going to happen. Chinese are right now building 18 megawatt machines offshore. So um, uh, we've had a revolution in renewable technology. There's a, a revolution right now, uh, within a couple of years, going on in batteries. Um, you know, batteries have been getting a lot of play. Uh, it is not batteries are not a new thing. The term battery was actually invented by Benjamin Franklin when he was pioneering our knowledge of electricity. So a couple hundred years with batteries. And um, there's a major switch going on <clears throat> from lithium, which is expensive, although they've had two major lithium finds. In, uh, in California, one's up on the border with Oregon and one's at the Salton Sea. And they're both very, very accessible with minimal and uh, some ecological damage, but not too bad. And um, so this is gonna revolutionize, really lower the costs of lithium batteries. Lithium batteries will always be in cars the, the, because of the nature of the technology, but uh, the big breakthrough is with sodium. And they are now, uh, we're, the industry is now in the process in terms of large steady state batteries of uh, switching to sodium, which will drop the cost of batteries by an order of magnitude. And this is a huge deal because the big rap against renewables, and I, I've heard this every debate I get into, somebody tells me as if they just found out that the sun doesn't shine at night. It's like you're, they expect a Nobel Prize for this great insight, you know. But the yeah. bottom line is <clears throat> that batteries change that. If you have a backup battery system, we have a huge backup battery system de facto in California, which has prevented blackouts. So if you have a backup battery system, solar is perfectly usable. And and, and that's what's happening. Yeah.
And if they find everything uh, locally that they need for the batteries, maybe fewer coups in Venezuela as well as a, as a side benefit. <laughs> yes, uh, exactly. We, we, well, we're, the, we're, you know, sodium is, is everywhere. Sodium is, is yes. very easy. Uh, it's easy to work with. It, it's just bulky. You'll not, you won't have sodium batteries in cars, but you will have them in factories and houses. And I will probably have one in my house soon. So we, there you go. We are talking about a solar topia with Harvey Wasserman, author of, I believe, a song, a book, and a website called Solar Topia. Yeah. Um, and my website yes. address, people want to write me, Solar Topia at Gmail. There you go. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> has public opinion kept up? Uh, is there polling? Do we know whether the general public uh, is? Uh, is on board with understanding uh, where renewables have gone versus where nuclear power has gone while we're seeing all this hype uh, about nuclear energy? Well, David, I, I've seen, we've had like six nuclear renaissances. You know, every, every couple of years they come, roll out a new renaissance and it's come to nothing because there are no, there are no large reactors under construction. So now they're spending all, the, spending all these wheels on the small reactors um, and they just had a major collapse. Uh, one of the one of the leading new scale NUSCAOE uh, had a big contract in the West to do small reactors. It fell apart because they can't they can't compete. Solar has just blown everybody away, along with the, along with wind. Uh, there, it's just a steady drop in price and a steady rise in efficiency. And um, and you know windmills do kill birds. But you know the um, the bottom line is that no no windmill has ever killed a fish, and um, uh, all these solar thermal all these thermal plants nuclear power is thermal they kill billions of of sea creatures every every year it's it's ridiculous they've done ser very serious ecological harm so the fight we have David is to deal right now with the um, decrepit. 94 reactors that we've got going. The average age of an American reactor, which is online, is 42 years old. I don't know if you've got a 42-year-old car, uh, but you know the other, the other, and they're all deteriorating. I mean, all the all the uh, reactors that we have are get dangerous by the more dangerous by the minute, and they're not insured. I mean, what great what greater um, comment can you have on the safety or lack of it with nuclear power? Then in 1957, the Congress was confronted. They want the military is is the basic pusher of nuclear power because they want the fissile materials. They want a trained workforce. They want a happy face on nuclear technology, which is basically for bombs. And um, so they've been pushing nuclear power, but they can't get insurance. No, no private insurer will step forward. Uh, you got to You have to have car insurance on your car for God's sakes. The, but the reality is, in 1957, uh, they were pushing nuclear power. None of the private utilities would buy nuclear power plants because they said, "Look, it blows up. We're we're done." So the Congress passed a law called the Price Anderson Act in 1957, and it said, "You don't need. You can build nuclear power. The federal government will cap your liability very low, ridiculous, and um, and you can go ahead." And for the next 15 years, you get a free ride, and then you'll have to get insurance. 15 years later, they couldn't get insurance. Every 15 years, they've been expanding the extending it. So after 70 years of experience with atomic power, we don't have none of these reactors is insured, not one. And they just extended the exemption to these so-called new reactors they want to build. So this technology, these new reactors have not even been built. And they're already exempt from insurance liability. <laughs> what does that tell you? You know, I mean, it's insane. It's... So people, uh, you know, people are, are being sucked up. Uh, you know, the uh, uh, approval of nuclear power has gone up lately because they're pouring all this money into it. There's no there there. This whole myth that nuclear power can uh, fight global warming. The, 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 um, um, the core is more than 500 degrees Fahrenheit, for God's sakes. And the water goes into the ocean 39 degrees hotter. Uh, and, and there's nuclear waste and there's radiation. What are these people thinking? It's insane. But there you go. 
<laughs> Where, where's the rest of the world on this? Are insurance companies in the rest of the world insuring these things? Are governments no. building them? I, some countries are moving away, but some countries are are planning to build more of these things, right? Well, Russia and China are pushing them in the third world, and then you got a few projects in Europe, and the projects in Europe are all a disaster. And the big news is that China, uh, Ger Germany, the number four economy in the world, California is number five, by the way, um, uh, is post-nuclear. They shut all their reactors. They, they had the great good fortune, Germany, of having a prime minister who was a, um, a female engineer and, you know, had the good sense of a woman and, and who was um, a, a chemist uh, who after she was a, she was in favor of nuclear power. She was resisting the Greens. This is what happened. It's very interesting. Um, the, the big Green Party in, in Germany, are totally anti-nuclear, and they called in 2011, they called for a big rally. They were pushing, pushing to get rid of nuclear power. They called for a giant rally in Germany. And between the time they called for, for the rally and the time of the actual rally, Fukushima blew up. And Angela Merkel, you know, God love her, as a scientist said, I don't think we're going to go, we, we're not going to do this anymore. And she put in a phase out plan. And the last reactors in Germany shut last year. <laughs> They're going totally, they have a huge amount of wind um, in the North Sea. But the problem is you got to send it down the country. So they've started a program to um, uh, promote solar, you know, with subsidies and, and stuff like that. And it blew everybody away. It got really it went way faster than than they they thought, and so yeah. Germany uh, is now phasing out their their uh, coal burners and um, and the uh, and the big <clears throat> big to do about um, gas because they were bringing in gas from Russia, and, and this pipeline mysteriously blew up. There's a lot of a lot of CIA speculation on that one. So um, um, you know Germany will be totally renewable um, within a decade. And they're, and they're post-nuclear now. And, um, you know, California, we have just two reactors left. They're petri incredibly dangerous. And uh, I live in L.A., and we're downwind, and, boy, it's, it's scary. But, the, you know, there you go. So this is actually a somewhat positive spin on the U.S. government, excuse me, the unknown party blowing up that pipeline. Uh, is that it's <laughs> I moving don't, Germany. You know, in the right I, I don't know what, what happened there. There's all, all sorts of it, the speculations all over the map. But somebody somebody blew up that pipeline and um, and and it's, it was gas. So uh, it, it's caused uh, wrecked some havoc with the uh, um, uh, markets in Europe. But they've had catastrophic um, um, experience, you, you'd think there'd be a learning curve. After 70 years, you'd think that the industry would know what to do. There, There's a, a, a reactor in um, uh, Finland that was 15 years in building and like double or triple the original uh, cost estimate. It is so expensive that they shut it down periodically to put wind into the grid because wind is so much cheaper. Uh, there, there's a reactor in France, Flamanville, Complete disaster. It's still not open after more than a decade. There are two they're building in 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 England. They're all you know failures. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the, the poster child is these two reactors in South Carolina. They're, they're actually, two uh, executives from the utility went to prison because they were lying to the public about the actual progress of these two reactors which they finally had to just abandon after spending $9 billion. How many projects have you heard of in American history where they blew $9 billion, for God's sakes? It's insane. I mean, if we set aside the military where that's pocket change, not very many. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it... well, they're all nuclear. <laughs> there was a $7 billion failure on Long Island at Shoreham, which they had to, they, they, filled, they finished the reactor, they fired it up for 10 minutes, and then they shut it down. Because after all, decades of, of fighting over this, they finally had to realize that you can't evacuate Long Island. Somebody finally, it's like figuring out that the sun doesn't shine at night. But, you know, uh, what, what can I tell you? So we've had, a, we've had dozens of abandoned reactant projects all over the country. And, uh, and here we are. But the real danger, David, is the, is the ones that are continuing to operate. Incredibly yeah. dangerous. 
And, and I think Harvey Wasserman that a lot of people don't know that the, the disasters they've heard of like Fukushima or Th Three Mile Island were a lot worse than they know. And that there have been a lot more disasters and a lot more near misses uh, than people generally know, right? Right. And the other big denial is that, um, uh, you know, your, your cohort and mine, Norman Solomon, uh, after the bomb tests in Nevada, he went and sat in kitchens and, and interviewed people who were harmed. And the big, you know, the, se the big secret of the, um, the Oppenheimer movie um, is that they don't talk about all the people that died because of the Trinity test. Yeah. You know, it's this big, big hoopla. They they got the bomb to work and it blows up and it's a nice big mushroom cloud. All that radiation killed people all over the Southwest. And yeah. I, in 1980, um, uh, nine months after the accident, January of 1980, spent the week, worst week of my life in central Pennsylvania in people's houses interviewing the, the so-called people who didn't die as a result of Three Mile Island. I mean, this radiation has been killing people all along and it still kills people. Um, you know, radiation comes off of nuclear plants. The one great job that the nuclear industry has successfully completed is not studying the health effects. You know, you would think that a, a sane society, if you can open a nuclear power plant, where you're already, you know, talking about radiation, you would do an epidemiological study of the ongoing effects. Of the, uh, you know, no, no federal, no state. Um, they just don't. They say there's no evidence that anybody's been harmed. Well, if you don't look for it, if you don't do the get, get the epidemiological uh, population base, you're not going to find it. You know that 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 they've very successfully done. You, you mentioned, Harvey, the, the ties to the military, and it's curious to me that the military would be the big pushers of, of a type of energy. Uh, but it does seem that it not only puts a positive spin on nukes, but it also proliferates nuclear technology and spreads the weapons and makes it harder for us to, to then ban the weapons. Um, how big, I mean, if we could get rid of nuclear weapons, wouldn't nuclear energy go away and vice versa? Yes. And you know who said that? That Macron, the prime minister of France, basically said, without nuclear power, there's no nuclear weapons. And without nuclear weapons, there's no nuclear power. Very clear statement. It's in the, the article at Counterpunch. And huh. um, uh, so the They've been a symbiosis. If you want to get a re really interesting, I did this recently. You know, the the one of the most famous speeches ever given was Dwight Eisenhower's uh, Adams for Peace speech at the UN. And you would think that this was, he'd be up there like, you know, uh, sn smelling the roses and all that stuff. It is a very militaristic speech. I went back and looked at it. Only at the very end does he talk about sharing nuclear technology. Most yeah. of that speech is, hey, We've got the bomb, and you guys better watch out. That's what the Adams for Peace speech was about, really. It's a very, very militant, um, um, saber-rattling speech. I was astounded when I finally looked at it, which was in the last month or two. But, you know, you know you the reality... The, Harvey, if you read the whole speech in which he blames the military-industrial complex and invents that famous phrase, it, too, is a very militaristic speech that blames the Soviet Union for everything and uh, excuses the creation of the military industrial complex because of the Soviet Union, but says it's an right. unfortunate thing. Uh, yeah. You know, but the other thing the nuclear power has done, which is even more terrifying, is uh, it's um, proliferated these nuclear power plants which can be easily converted into weapons of mass destruction without moving. And, you know, we've had this thing in Zaporizhia now, uh, which, which is a Ukrainian reactor. With their own, they were owned by Ukraine. They were built by the Russians. And then, you know, they've been back and forth. I don't know who owns it right now. Um, and then, you know, Russia says it a does. Years. But that doesn't help because you have to, you have spent fuel pools. There's six reactors at Zaporizhia. And and there's six spent fuel pools, and every one of those spent fuel pools is a, is an apocalyptic, uh, an apocalypse in the waiting, because the 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 severest danger where we really almost lost the whole human race at Fukushima 
was in Unit 4, which actually did not have a meltdown. At Fukushima, 1, 2, and 3 melted down, and you had explosions, which were caused by hydrogen. And But Unit 4, hydrogen seeped in, and it blew up, and the reactor was completely um, uh, debilitated. But these idiots who built these nuclear plants put the spent fuel pools on top. For God's sakes, they're up there flying in the air. What, what, what drug were these guys on? And if you lose coolant to a spent fuel pool, the zirconium that's, that wraps the, uh, the fuel rods will catch fire and, and may blow up. But the fires spreading that radiation would have um, more than been more than sufficient to wipe out the human race. I mean, you know, the incredible amounts of radiation in a spent fuel pool are are beyond reckoning. And so now we have Zaporizhia, which the first one in a war zone. This is the first time we had reactors in a war zone, and there and there there's drones flying over these things, and God forbid they should hit the fuel pool. You know, Ukraine, much of Russia, the whole of Europe. It'd be worse than Chernobyl, for God's sakes. It's Harvey, terrifying. We've, we've got about two minutes left. I think that point alone ought to be sufficient to put an end to nuclear <laughs> yeah. energy. What what can what are you working on now? And what can people do to help? And how can people uh, keep up with your work? The number one thing we need to do is to um, um, uh, spread roof, rooftop solar and get these reactors shut. And, um, uh, you know, they're, they're not economical, they're dangerous, they're uninsured, the whole deal. This nuclear renaissance is just, you know, it's a bad ass trip, basically. It, it's ridiculous. And people ne- really need to pay attention. And the number one priority we have to have is to shut the old reactors. That, that's number one, hand in hand with spreading solar. And, you know, weirdly enough, if we had a free market in energy, solar would just take over tomorrow. So here in California, we've been stabbed in the back by Gavin Newsom who signed a deal to shut the Apple Canyon in 2016 through 18. There was a whole beautiful process. We came up with a great phase out and then he, he betrayed us and without a hearing or anything. He's strong on the legislature and they got a billion and four, four to keep the Apple operating and they're, and they're sabotaging the solar industry in California. It's really ugly. And so what we need to do everywhere is to promote rooftop solar, put uh, windmills where they're appropriate, uh, like in northern Ohio, where I worked on it for a long time. And uh, I'll close by giving you some numbers. The uh, nuclear utility in Ohio (laughs) bought the legislature for $61 million. The Speaker of the House is now in the uh, federal penitentiary for 20 years. Uh, The former chair of the Public Utility Commission uh, committed suicide. There are two suicides involved with this, all to support nuclear power. And so, you know, we have the numbers on our side. We have totally had a successful renewable energy revolution in terms of the technology. Now we have to put the panels on every rooftop, put the windmills where they're appropriate, get the batteries distributed. That's it. It's it's not a, it's a, a no-brainer. And then shut the operating reactors, which is doable, definitely doable. So here we go, David. We've been speaking with Harvey Wasserman. We'll have some links up at talkworldradio.org. Harvey, thank you very, very much for coming on Talk World Radio. Great. Great to be with you. Thank you so much, David. We'll see you at Solartopia. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at peacealmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at talkworldradio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.